All right. First off, I wanted to congratulate all you guys for a job well done this year. You completed your AP exam if you're watching this movie, so I'm very happy that um, it's done. And now we get to have a little lab fun, and things will be a little bit less stressful in this course. But you all have done a great job. Anyway, we're starting the Green Crystal Lab. Um, I'm going to be providing you videos for each experiment that you will need to watch as the weeks progress, and those are um, indicated on your calendar. There's a schedule that you'll need to follow. So um, in class, we talked a little bit about the point of this lab, and the point of the lab is to determine the empirical formula of an iron oxalato salt. Um, in experiment one, which is what you're going to be doing very soon, um, you will have to actually make the salt. So um, your first steps are going to be to, and by the way, it's good to have a have a copy of, if you're watching this on your iPad, it's going to be tough to do, but it's good to have a copy of your lab out while you're watching these videos because you can make notations on the um, in notebook or whatever on a PDF to um, help you remember some of this stuff. But um, the first thing you're going to do is weigh out some potassium oxalate in a beaker, and you're going to have the beaker labeled with your initials because it's going to sit overnight in the refrigerator once you make the crystal. You're going to add some water to the beaker, to said beaker right there, and you're going to heat it until the oxalate is dissolved. And then you're going to add 8 mils of a pre-made ferric chloride, and you can add, once it's dissolved, you can add this ferric chloride directly into the warm solution. If you're having trouble getting this dissolved, um, all you have to do is just put in a little more water and keep adding water little bits at a time until it actually does dissolve. Once it's dissolved, pour the ferric chloride directly into it, and you should immediately see this green color. This always works, so just know you will not have a problem with this. We're going to take that, and I'm going to go ahead and put them in a bin and take your class's bin to the fridge and let it sit overnight. That way the molecules can slow down and allowing them to uh, appropriately form the crystal that they need to form. Then the next day, you're going to take it and you're going to filter your crystal. You're going to rinse it. Now this apparatus that you see here, this filtration system, we're not going to use. You're actually just going to use the normal gravity filtration that you know how to do where you have the filter paper and the triangular funnel. You're going to rinse a couple times with a few mils of water. And you'll see, you might have some white leftover oxalate on there. You want to clean that crystal up. And then you're going to do a final rinse with acetone. Acetone is going to help that crystal dry. This crystal has to be totally dry before you're allowed to use it. Um, you don't want to use a lot of water or acetone because the crystal is water soluble. So you only want to use as little as you need to to get it rinsed off and clean. Um, you are then going to place your crystal. This is kind of what it looks like. It looks like this. You're going to place that crystal in a film canister with a dot. Anywhere you see dots, every class has their own colored dot, and you're going to put your name or initials on the dot so you know it's yours. And you're going to put your crystals in the canister, and you're going to leave that lid off. Whether it's on the side next to it or whether it's on top open, you have to leave it open or the crystal will not dry. And then you're going to take it back to what we call home base, which you'll see in the next video. Um, so that's it. Making the crystal is pretty easy. Another thing that you have to do before you start the next experiment is making a potassium permanganate solution. It is on the calendar that you have to do that, so just look at your calendar and follow the timeline. You have to make the potassium permanganate because in experiment two, we are then going to standardize that potassium permanganate. So to make it, you're going to weigh out an appropriately calculated amount. Check with friends. Make sure you calculated the right amount to get a particular molarity, which is all in your lab. You're going to weigh that out. And then you're going to put it into a 250 milliliter volumetric. You're going to QS, cap it, and invert it. It's super dark. If you get it on your hands, you're going to dye your hands for a while. And then you're going to transfer that to a bottle. This is home base. This is what it looks like. So every class has their own set of stuff. Notice there's film canisters 
that will be holding your crystals. These darker bottles are going to be the bottles that hold your group's permanganate. Whenever you're done for the day in class, everything goes back to home base. If I, we'll talk about points and systems and like that, but if things aren't returned where they need to be, that's an organizational point, and um, you lose points for that kind of thing. So everything needs to be back in place. We have a lot of students running through the lab daily, so we've got to keep things in order. So you're going to grab one of the permanganate storage bottles, and you're going to transfer your permanganate into the bottle, and again, you're going to write your initials on the dots, and then put it back to home base when you're done. So that also needs to be accomplished. Please, again, verify the amount of permanganate you're using is correct, because if it's wrong, you're going to get um, we don't know how many mils then it'll take in the titration, which could lead to a lot of bad things happening. So important that we're consistent and correct all the way through this process. All right, that's it for experiment one. Please tune in to our next experiment two, three video shortly. Have a great day.